Hello and welcome back to IXL Tutorials. This is Mr. Duffick and we'll be continuing on with the circle set of IXL uh, problems. So we're going to go to U4 which is area of sectors or a sector area. And area of sectors is going to be very similar to the last IXL uh, U3 which was arc length. Same process and everything with one small detail. So Last time when we were talking about arc length, we were talking about the length of the line right here, the length of our arc. Okay, uh, this time we're talking about the area of what's called a sector. Now, if you remember from U1, a sector within a circle is just a piece of a circle. It's just a section of it, right? Just this blue section right here. So instead of finding the area of the entire circle, you know, all the space on the inside of a circle, we're only going to be finding all of the space within this sector or this section of the circle. And the format is going to be pretty much the same as arc length. So first step is we are going to want to find the area of the entire circle. Last time we wanted to find the circumference of the entire circle because that's a, that related directly to arc length. This time, we're gonna just find the area because that relates directly to area of that sector. So remember the area of a circle is going to be A equals pi r squared or pi times r squared, right? So our area is going to be pi times r squared. So pi times r, r it says is eight, eight kilometers. So we're just going to plug 8 into here, so 8 squared. We'll simplify that further. 8 squared is just 8 times 8, 8 times itself. So 8 times 8 is 64. So our area is going to be 64 pi. And remember, pi is just 3.14. For IXL purposes, we're not going to multiply it out. We're just going to leave it here. IXL uh, rather uh, it rather as you have the pi for some reason probably just to make it easier on you so you don't have to multiply 64 times 3.14 and keep track of all of those numbers so we're going to leave the area right there as 64 pi okay step two just like uh, with arc length we're going to make a proportion ratio or fraction so the top is always going to be the degree value of our sector, so it's 135 degrees, so we'll do 135 for the numerator, for the top of the fraction, divided by the denominator. The denominator is just going to be the degree value for the entire circle. Okay, so how many degrees are in one whole circle? Of course, it's gonna be 360. So that's going to be our proportion ratio right here. 135 divided by 360. And we're going to multiply that times our area. So the area is going to be 64 pi. Okay, uh, some students are um, assisted when I write down 64 pi over 1. Uh, remember 64 pi or 65 pi over 1 or 64 pi times 1, all the same thing. Whether you multiply or divide something by 1, it's just going to equal itself. So uh, the reason why I do this is it kind of helps students realize that when we multiply these two numbers together, we are going to be multiplying across. So we're going to multiply 135 times 64 pi. So putting that in a calculator, 135 times 64 is it's going to be 8,640 and then pi, can't forget the pi, divided by 360, like this. Now, like I said in the last video, IXL is pretty finicky when it comes to what answers you put in. Um, it wants you to put it in the simplest form possible, as dictated here, and it wants you to keep the pi in there usually. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna simplify this down. So we have 8,640, uh, divided by 360. So immediately both of those numbers have a zero at the end. So we'll just cancel the zeros out, divide both by 10 in other words, and we're going to end up with 864 pi divided by 
36. And from here, we're just going to multiply it down um, until we reach a fraction that cannot be multiplied down further. So we'll divide both the top and the bottom by two. So if we divide 864 by two, we are going to end up with 432 pi divided by 36 divided by two is 18. Okay, let's see if we can divide that again. So we'll divide again both sides by two. So half of 432 is going to be 216 pi and divided by 18, uh, divided by two or half of 18 is just nine. And let's see if we can divide it out any further. So 216 divided by nine is 24. Okay, so 216 and nine go perfectly in together, which means 864 and 36 probably would have as well, but that's fine, it's good practice. So if we divide both sides by nine, the numerator and the denominator by nine, we get 24 pi div uh, divided by, nine divided by nine is just one, so 24 pi, which is the same thing saying 24 pi. 24 pi over one is the same thing as saying 24 pi. And that's going to be our arc length right there. So we'll go back, we'll write 24 and pi, and that is correct. Okay, good start. Uh, let's do another one, and this one is going to be a little bit easier. So again, we have a two-step process here. So first step, we're going to find the area of the um, overall circle. Area is pi times r squared. So area is going to equal pi times r R, our radius is going to be four, four feet. So we'll just plug in four in for R, so four squared. Four squared is just four times four. So four times four is 16. So the area is just gonna be 16 pi. Down to step two, our proportion ratio. So the numerator is always gonna be our degree value of the sector. So it's gonna be 45 degrees divided by always, always, always going to be 360 over a general 360 degrees. And we will multiply that by our area of the entire circle as 16 pi. This time I'll leave off the one. Okay, we're gonna multiply across. So we have 45 multiplied by 16. That's gonna be 720. So 720 pi and then divided by 360, that's all we have left. Okay, this is a much easier fraction. We know that 360 fits into 720 exactly twice, so when we divide those two numbers, all we're left with is just two pi, and that's it, okay? Now, another way to think about this problem is this. So. We know 45 degrees is exactly an eighth of a circle, right? 180 degrees is half a circle, 90 degrees is a quarter of a circle, 45 degrees is an eighth of a circle. So if we know the area of the entire circle, we would just need to divide it by eight and we're done. We wouldn't have to set up this proportion ratio or anything. So if you had our overall area of 16 pi and then divided it by eight, what are we left with? Two pi, so same thing. Again, if you can do that in your head, totally fine. Uh, if you need to go the longer route, totally fine too. That's just kind of an easier way to think about it. So the answer is two pi. There we go. Okay, good example right here. This is a 90 degree uh, sector. So if we just found the entire area of the circle and divided it by four, that would be the area of just what's inside the sector. I'm gonna skip this problem. Okay. Um, I'll skip this problem, but I will comment on it. It's going to be the exact same process, but remember when you're setting up your area equation, A equals pi r squared, they're giving you the diameter here. So you're going to set up A equals pi, um, 
radius squared. So the radius is going to be 6, right? It's just going to be half of this 12. So it's going to be pi times 6 squared, not pi times uh, 12 squared. So remember that. Make sure you know which number they're giving you, whether it's radius or diameter. Okay, here's a good one. So once you get far enough in this IXL, they give you problems where they're basically asking you to work backwards, where they give you your area of the sector and they're asking you for the degree value of your sector right here of the arc. So uh, it's the same process, except we're going to work a little bit backwards. And all we're going to do is number one, we're going to find the area of the entire circle. So A equals pi R squared. A equals pi times R. So we go over here, another good example. They give us the diameter is 10, so D is 10, but we need R, right? So if the entire length of this line is 10 inches, and we only want the radius, which is half, it's just going to be half, right? So half of 10 is 5, so our radius is 5. So we're going to plug in 5 squared for that one. Okay, we're going to simplify further. 5 squared or 5 times 5 is 25, so we have 25 pi as our area for the entire circle. So good. Now, we're going to continue on with our second step, which of course is the proportion ratio. Except for our denominator, we know it's going to be 360. It's obvious. It can be the same case every time. But our numerator is what we're trying to find. That's the thing that's missing. If we figure out what our numerator is, we're done. That's the degree value for this arc. So I'm just going to put in an arbitrary x. It's missing variable. So this is our proportion ratio, x over 360, because we're trying to figure out what x is, multiplied by our area, which is 25 pi, equals. And instead of trying to find the area of this sector, they give us the area of the sector. And the area of sector, they say, is 5 pi. 5 pi is the area of this sector. So we're going to set that equal to just 5 pi. Okay, now from here, we're just going to combine what we can. So we'll multiply across like normal, and we're left with x 25 pi, or 25 pi x, divided by 360 equals 5 pi. Okay? Now again, we want to get x by itself, right? Because x is going to be our answer. So to do that, we first got to get rid of the 360. So because we're dividing this entire thing by 360, we're going to have to multiply the entire side and then also the entire other side by 360 to get rid of it. So 360s cancel out. 360 divided by 360 is 1. So we're just left with x 25 pi or 25 pi x equaling 5 pi times 360, which is going to be 1800 pi. Okay, so now we're, uh, we can just cancel out the pies really easily. So pies and pies are gone. And we're left with x 25 or 25 x equals 1800. So to get x by itself, we just got to divide the 25 out. Divide, divide, cross the 25s out. So we're left with x equals, and then what is 1800 divided by 25? That is going to be... 72. So x is going to equal 72 degrees. Okay, so we go back, we type in 72 degrees. Remember, not pi, not 72 pi, this is just the degree value, right? And it is indeed correct. Okay, good. Same problem right here, so I won't uh, do it. Next problem, same deal up to 87, same same exact deal, and that's it. Okay, we're up to 95, and it's probably going to be the same. Oh, same problem, except there's no circle. So it says the radius is 15, um, and they give you the uh, area of a sector is 10 pi. So same problem, except they don't give you a circle. You just got to work backwards. So, All right, I'll end the video there. Um, and remember the material is very similar to arc length. So if you need a little bit more support, you can go back to my U3 video, uh, to get some more explanation. Okay. See you next time with IXL tutorials. Goodbye.